Look what just showed up. This is the Himaway Zebra D5 all-terrain fat tire e-bike. It's big, it's comfortable, it's got a huge payload capacity, and it comes with a pretty large battery, so we should be able to go the distance with this thing. Today, I'm going to take an in-depth look at the features, the specs, and go for a ride and find out what this reasonably priced fat tire e-bike is all about. So Himaway is an e-bike company that's been around since 2017, and they have a number of pretty nice looking fat tire e-bikes to choose from, and they sent me this D5 to check out. So this has a 750 watt rear hub motor, a 960 watt hour battery, and a 400 pound payload capacity. And they say this battery should allow this bike to go 60 miles on pure electric power, so we'll be sure to test that out. And there are a few different versions of this bike. There is this high step, and there's also a step through. And for each of those, you also get to choose whether or not you want a torque sensor or a cadence sensor. This one right here has a torque sensor, which is a $200 option over the cadence sensor. In just a bit, we'll get to the differences between those two and why you might want to choose one over the other. So if you're new to the world of e-bikes, you might be wondering why the huge surge in popularity. Electric bikes really have redefined convenience and fun on two wheels. They can allow you to cover greater distances and conquer challenging terrain without getting tired. And that means you might be more likely to use your bike for transportation and not just recreation. Though my channel primarily focuses on cars, you might have noticed some e-bike reviews recently. Living in a city with a lot of traffic, I found that getting around by car is often tedious and unpleasant. For me, e-bikes have unlocked a more fun way of getting around. And a bike like this opens up even more possibilities, like hitting some light trails or riding on the beach. So this bike was shipped to me in a very large, extremely heavy box, but everything was well packed and the assembly process was pretty easy and straightforward. You don't need to be a bike mechanic. If you can hold a wrench and you've got like 30 to 45 minutes, you can complete the steps to get this thing up and running and ready to ride. And Himaway does have some dealers in North America, so if you can find this at your local bike shop, you may be able to skip the whole assembly process altogether. All right, so let's do a walk around of this bike and check out all of the features and specs. I really dig this gunmetal gray color, but there's a couple other colors to choose from. What do you think of the style of this bike? I think it looks pretty good. It's got a thick aluminum frame. This is a pretty big and chunky bike. This thing is kind of like a tank. The recommended height for this bike is like 5'3 to 6'5. I'm 6'3 and this is a pretty comfortable sized bike for me. It's got a 750 watt geared hub motor. It's actually Himaway branded. 86 Newton meters of torque, which seems pretty impressive. It's got a relatively large 20 amp hour or 900 60 watt hour battery. It's integrated into the frame. The ignition is not keyed, just the battery is. Himaway says the estimated range is 60 miles on throttle only and 80 miles while pedaling, and of course we'll test this. They say it has a top speed of 20 miles per hour plus, which is a bit vague, so we'll test that out. It weighs in at a hefty 79 pounds, pretty typical for this type of bike, but what's not typical is the payload specs. It can hold up to 400 pounds, which is pretty impressive. It's got the Shimano Altus seven speed drivetrain, which is what you'll often see on bikes at this price point. It's got five different pedal assist modes, battery indicator up there, your speed and your trip odometer. And this one right here has a torque sensor. So essentially a torque sensor detects the force of your pedaling, which tells the motor how much power to apply. And that can result in a bike that feels more natural, more like a regular bike instead of like a moped. A lot of cheaper e-bikes come with a cadence sensor that turns the motor on or off when it simply detects you pedaling. And that can often feel like an on off switch for the motor. So I'm looking forward to trying this out. Up here on the left, you have a thumb throttle. The controls on the left are very simple and easy to operate. It's got 180 millimeter Tektro brakes and they are hydraulic, not cable operated. It's got front suspension that can be adjustable, but no rear suspension. It's got a really wide cushy seat and giant 26 by four Kenda tires wrapped around spoke wheels. Now, generally speaking, fat tires can offer some comfort advantages. They do a good job of soaking up bumps, but they can add weight and rolling resistance, which may reduce efficiency versus a non-fat tire bike. It's got two plastic fenders. It's got a pretty big headlight, also has a brake light. There's no horn here, but there is a bell. One thing that I like is that there's a pretty substantial cargo rack that was pre-installed from the factory here. It looks really nice with the Himaway logo right on the top. Looks like some mounting points up here for a front rack and mounting points on the frame for like a water bottle holder. One nice feature is that the wires and cables are neatly routed through the frame. It's got a big chunky kickstand and this bike also comes with a two year warranty. 
All right, so today let's take this bike through the city down to the Los Angeles River bike path and then onto some trails and see how it does. We'll test out the comfort, the range and more. Let's go. So as I mentioned, we got that 750 watt rear hub motor. It's churning out 86 newton meters of torque. It does a pretty good job of getting us up to our top speed pretty quickly. So out of the box, this is a class two bike, meaning that the top speed is set at 20 miles per hour. But if you do want higher speeds, it can easily be unlocked to go 28. All right, so let's check out the top speed here. And yes, the top speed that I see here is indeed 28. So just be sure to check with your local laws to determine what speeds are allowed where you ride. But for me, being able to go 28 is very useful when I'm riding around cars. Okay, let's do a quick hill test right here. All right, let's see how it does. Full throttle, no pedaling. Yeah, it's not bad. Considering we've got 86 Newton meters of torque here, I would hope it'd do pretty well. Okay, so let's say you actually want to get a little bit of exercise and move your legs. So let's use the pedals. We've got five levels of pedal assist here, one being the lowest amount of power sent from the motor, five obviously being the highest. And as I mentioned before, we've got a torque sensor here. And because it does have that torque sensor, it gives a pedaling feel that feels more like a traditional non-motorized bike. So when pedaling, it detects the force of your pedaling and that will in turn tell the motor how much power to provide. Many inexpensive e-bikes have cadence sensors, which can often result in a more sort of jerky application of power. And this is decently smooth here. I really dig it. And because we have that torque sensor, just about every bit of this seven speed Shimano gear set feels very usable up until about 20 miles per hour. After that, like most e-bikes, you'll run out of gearing, but maximum speeds are where you're more likely to just use the throttle anyway. Now, in terms of stopping power, we do need a good amount of it because this bike weighs almost 80 pounds. All right, let's do a downhill brake test. Yeah, that's not bad at all, considering how heavy this bike is. I'm glad we got those hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. It does a pretty good job of bringing all of this mass to a stop. So with the weight of this bike, along with those wide tires, it does give this bike a very stable feel when riding. Though it does have very heavy steering, the weight up front is noticeable. And that can be the case with a lot of heavy bikes running on wide tires. So in terms of comfort, we have a lot of things in our favor here. I really like this seat. It's wide and it has a generous amount of cushion. And now this bike has front suspension, but it does not have rear suspension. And it does a nice job of soaking up the bumps. But of course, with no rear suspension, you'll have to keep an eye out for large imperfections in the road. But these giant four inch tires really do help provide some more cushion. So the riding position here is relatively high, but the handlebars are in a pretty good spot for me. There's a little bit of adjustability there. And it is mostly a straight across handlebar, so it does have more of a leaning forward riding position. I'm also quite thankful that this bike has an included cargo rack, so I can put my camera gear and my bike lock on the back of the bike rather than on my back. Okay, let's talk about range. So I've ridden about 25 miles so far, and it certainly looks like I'm on track to get maybe 50 miles for this charge. So I decided to basically climb a mountain with this thing today. I don't really know why I decided to do that. Now this bike is marketed as an all-terrain bike, and I suppose that could be true given these chunky tires and the front suspension. Now I probably wouldn't be sending this heavy bike off of any mountain bike jumps, but it does a pretty good job handling some easy trails and fire roads around here. Huh, can't believe I rode all the way up to the top of this mountain. Pretty cool. Okay, I got two bars of battery left. Did a lot of uphill right there. So let's see if I can make it back home. I'm not gonna be using any battery on the way down this hill, so that should be helpful. Okay, so I made it back home. I did have a bit of range anxiety there for a bit because my display was showing one bar for quite a while now, but I did ride 33 miles today with a fair amount of pedaling, but it also had a 2,600 foot climb and elevation. 
So the display on an e-bike generally only gives you a rough estimate of battery charge. So let's put the battery on a multimeter to see how many volts it shows. 54.6 would be fully charged and we have 45.7 volts. On a 48 volt system that roughly translates to between 40 to 45% charged. So e-bikes generally only let you deplete the battery to a safe level. It'll never let you go all the way down to 0% state of charge. So it looks like maybe we could have gotten around 16 more miles of range out of this thing, putting us at a total of 50 miles for the day, including some pedaling. And that's a fair amount more than I've seen on some similar e-bikes. Anyway, I'll charge this thing back up and it should take about seven hours to get from low to full using the included three amp charger. All right, so how much does all of this cost you? This Zebra D5 high step with the torque sensor comes in at $16.99. That seems like a pretty reasonable price for what you're getting here. And it's $200 less if you opt for the cadence sensor instead of the torque sensor that's found here. So yeah, there's a few negatives here, but honestly, they're really minor. This is a very heavy bike, but that's the case with nearly all long range fat tire e-bikes. And I think I'd prefer the throttle to be on the right instead of the left, but that's really it. And there are a lot of positives here. I really like the design. The seat is comfortable. I like that it comes with a nice looking cargo rack pre-installed. The suspension works well, it rides nice. I'm looking forward to taking this thing on some more adventures in the future. So what do you think of this long range fat tire e-bike from Himaway? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. If you wanna help support the channel, please buy a Hello Road t-shirt at helloroad.tv shop. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well and I'll see you soon.